so so in the redis lab uh, what we can basically do we can create a new database okay so redis lab is a website that you can log in uh, instead of you know installing the redis in your local right so here i'm choose my account and then after the account it will ask you that which cloud provider you're going to be using they provide both the aws gcp and azure free tier okay so like here like 30 mb free tier is available out here and after this uh, server will be starting up and in the server you can get the public endpoint that you can copy from here which is available for your example or port Okay. And if you click the collapse all, so this is going to come up with the, all the default uh, module like Redis JSON or Redis Search, time series, etc. But anything additional you wanted to enable, maybe Stream or etc., that you may need to install your local server that you can download from the Redis site. Uh, as a docker image and you can install and run that if you want it to and from here you need to copy the particular user so basic examples are here is that uh, you have like one content and two backend one is to manage the inventory another is for managing the payment so here all of the application is using very simple Example, it has only have two dependencies. One is Radium OM. Okay. But in local, I think this required me to update the normal C version. Without that, this particular thing is currently not installing. Okay. So we need to update your C driver, whatever you have, and then it can be install or you can install any other client for that matter and the first api you have to be it and also it has uh, this example also support your stream so stream example is also there so here is a normal first api uh, what we have is basically first api you know cross middleware backend runs and for radio OS, you're getting the connectivity and the hash model that you're doing a normal request and request time etc is there. So here you create a first API object and in the first API object we add the cross middleware allowing from the local content and the allowing the different methods that are there. And you can use the other libraries that are also available from the ready so you don't have to use this specific library also okay so basic things you will be requiring either you are running the local redis instances or the host as well as the port along with the password and decode responses is true so thereby you created the connection so here you have the normal hash model that you have made from the particular it is OEM library that you are extending and this particular model will also store the data in the Redis JSON format. Okay. So here you have a basic card operation example. Are you going to getting a particular primary key? You're going to get the value, or you're going to be getting the value, create an object with the backend stocks, and also get the particular another service. So, this service will be calling say another service, say 8080 port, and it is like a portal. So, from there, you can get a particular JSON. Okay. So this payment service will call the inventory service, product service, get the request JSON, and create the order based on the product ID, product price, product fee, that means the price and a certain fee is added. 
and the total say this is like our tax that has been added and the quantity that is there from your normal request body and the status is cleaning and the order is saved. Similarly, so, and then that particular backend class, you have the order completed and the order that is there. And you return the order. When order completion start, what you are basically doing in the ready stream using the XRAD, you are creating this particular stream you mentioning that, say for example, you now uh, say order is being fulfilled later, right? So then what you can do with the normal XADD command that you interact with the ready stream, you pass the ready stream name is the order collected, completed, and you send the order as a dictionary, and you pass that particular value. So that can be also create a ready stream and you can create an event event kind of an application as well. So this particular piece of code is our producer code and that will be listened by our inventory and inventory then can return any data into the stream and we can have our consumer. So in the Redis cluster, uh, in the Redis particular cluster, you can have multiple such stream, all they have like a specific names. Okay, as you know, normally it is what is this basically key value pair, it's a cache that is there, and that particular key value pair contains what? So, here we are storing the record as a hash table. So, it's basically this whole things are stored out here. So, when we are storing this, this is also gets stored as an order hash table where this particular thing is stored we are creating the constant and we are calling the save so then when you are calling getting the value you are using a particular primary key and after the save what you are doing you are returning you are not returning anything you are returning the order which has the particular unique primary key id so when you're saving the data as a json each of the json like your mongodb has a generated id so that particular generated id has been and the whole object has been written and in the first endpoint you can pass that particular id that is being generated and that using that you can you know get the value back And here we have another class in meta which has containing the ready So let's first see the first one that is the, your inventory service, same kind of dependencies that are out here. Um, in your main function, what you have the same ready swim, then you have the box middleware. Here I need to also can populate, if we need to connect to the same database, I can also populate the same values that are out here. Both operate out of the same databases. Here we are storing that particular JSON as a product, name, price, and quantity. So here, if we wanted to get the, all the product, what you have to do is, so product, all pk that returns a pk from that and that is the, all the primary keys have been written then we are calling the format where we are individually calling the coder and then we are formatting and returning that particular json and that returns as an array format so this particular coder have been written for example you wanted to create a reporter you get the response as a product object, the request is JSON and you can save it as it is. Okay. And also, like simply, if you have the ID, you can call the delete or get, etc. So, if you use a particular Redis related library, these are very simple to use. In. So, let's see after this being done, right? Now, for example, if somebody is paying that from this service, as you mentioned, that it is calling the product service, right? 
on the product dot is that is the body id that means this method has been call out over here and the exact product is going to be written now in the back end task what we send is that say we have simulated that this order has been placed and order status has been completed then the xst you putting this particular stream you are putting the order as a discharge so this event stream will be listened by this consumer okay okay now what is when this particular application getting started what is actually doing is it creating a consumer group okay so first key is the same between the two one is that here you have the same stream name you are doing it but when our application runs right our application runs against a particular multiple cluster so multiple instances will be there right which will be consuming the order completed event out of here so when they listen to the order completed event so we create a consumer group using the x group create command where you pass that particular key and the inventory okay and as a part of the consumer group if you wanted to read the value okay you can continuously put a while keyword and you can try to read the value from that particular group name and that particular key that you want to be using that is our stream name and then from there whatever result you get you get the corresponding uh, result after you get the object and from the object you get the product detail product quantity and then that particular product quantity from your current product object that you will get fetching from your local say from the stream we found that certain five i in the inventory i have like 10 item is present right now i got to be reading that particular 10 item five item has been sold so this inventory this stream if i find anything i'm going to be saving that and by reducing this and now after that if there is any exception occurs then again i you know send out that refund order against the same one okay so it will sleep for one second and try to again listen from this and exact so now it created another refund order so there are like two different streams are there one is the order completed one is the refund order right so for example say there is an api where you can see what are the orders have been there okay and from the order you wanted to refund refund or transfer that particular order so then here you are putting this particular object which is going into that particular stream and this stream has been listened by here okay you create the group again the same logic so here when that particular order has been written okay you are getting that particular order id and the order status you have changed to refund it and the order is being saved so that you can do it so if you wanted to you know draw this diagram right how this is it okay. so let's for example take that. I Yes, Anthony, you have a question. So basically, there should be uh, two consumer processes running at the same time, one for the refund order and uh, mm -hmm. one for the uh, 
uh, order completed, right? So two resist streams simultaneously, two or will be running on two interpreters, and based on whenever the stream is being triggered, uh, the 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 background trust process it, right? Right. Right. Okay. So so the, this is the my product service, right? And this is my payment service. So this payment service is also being integrated with Stripe or any other payment gateway. So now from the front end, see the this actor is the admin can manages the product route here right and another is that say front end user or the buyer we can see who is going to be looking into this application and also here you are returning the list of from the list of product it can also send a request for purchase okay. so purchase request will go here into the payment service so you're going to see the list of products in a product say listing page and from the product listing page he can choose which products he need to purchase with the quantity and etc. And then on that particular checkout page, so purchase and he's going to be doing the checkout. So you can do the stripe based checkout out here, right? So then based on here, whatever you know detail it got, it's going to be making the Type call for making the for capturing the particular payment. I can CC or now in the back end, what are you going to be using? We are using Redis. Now in Redis, say we have like a single cluster. And in this cluster, what we have is one is the product JSON, right? So here you have a particular Redis JSON. And in this, so here we are using the product ID, etc., etc., the name, quantity. And see, etc. And along with that, the important thing is it also storing the quantity. Here. Here one JSON data has been stored, right? So when the JSON data has been stored, so it's basically simply calling the get method, right? And all the methods are whatever you know fields, this whole thing will be stored as a JSON object along with the status or whatever. So this is one object that being stored and that is managed by this particular product table. and this is much more faster going to work much more faster than the normal uh, sql 
databases we have. Here you can also do the same kind of indexes that you can do if you need to search by portal based on their availability brand, etc. That you can also do. And here I'm saving that as a with that particular module as a registers. Now, now there is you to have the order that has been managed. That is the order ID, and it can have say list of order items. Here you can store the product ID. product that I'm purchasing, how much amount of product that I'm currently purchasing in terms of quantity, purchasing clean. So what is that? Okay, clean maybe up out here. Keep it here. And then I'm having like, what is the cost of it? Right? What is the price? Along with that, the price can also contain some taxes. So total price for me will be something like Something like that. Now, when this uh, data has been stored out here, this application is also going to be doing work. It's going to make a payment. When the payment has been made, so initially the order status will be. Pending, right? And against the Stripe, it communicates, which is a payment gateway. And then it see the payment has been properly processed, right? The, whatever CC information is uh, provided is correct. So then it's going to do is, it's going to update the status from pending to complete. And instead of here, when the pending uh, to complete is there, what I have to do, I have to reduce the quantity that is there for my stock, right? That is the product service or inventory service. So what you're going to have is that here in this radius, there will be one stream that is say here will be is the say purchase complete stream is there. And the purchase complete stream going to have the details of which order has been, which product has been purchased, which order this is for. And then after this, Purchase complete event is pushed. And when the purchase complete event is pushed, it's going to have the basic detail about what are the product ID. And is the quantity sold. 
that screen. So based on this particular payload, okay. So this is our consumer, right? There is like a consumer which is a backend task that is running out here. So that particular backend task will listen to this stream. So this information goes, this consume the method, and if we're not throwing any exception, this has been removed. And then correspondingly, yours quantity has been reduced to 100 to 90. Now say, user wanted to cancel the order. If you wanted to cancel the purchase, so then, say for example, there is a separate stream is there. Okay. So in this, So currently here the payment service will listen to this cancel order say this been been done by another service okay. I think this should be if we design properly there should be a separate thing like an order service and then is, there is like a payment service, okay? Payment complete or purchase complete, then this service and also this service can be also be in a consumer. So when they are creating this, they are creating separate consumer groups, right? So in the separate consumer groups, one is coming from the product service, one is coming from the order service, right? Now, instead of this, right, so order service is storing this order out here, right? Now, why we basically use two streams? Basically, we use stream to decouple. Stream is nothing but the event of object one after another generate, right? So if the say order has been properly submitted, then you can create an event for purchase to be there then the payment service will listen to that particular event interact with your payment gateway and then update the payment complete so then what happened is your order service also listen to this and update the status to complete and your product service also listen to that and update and reduce that their quantity And what is the benefit of this? Cannot we do this using API to API communication? We certainly can do that. But the problem is that it will make it all is asynchronous, right? If any particular API get filled, it will not get completed. Okay. So 
when the purchase is happening, this was happening there. This order being created. This type is updated. Okay. Instead of this, instead of directly calling this particular service, order service can have another stream name order fulfillment or purchase completion. So here in the part of the stream, so in which order this events will be used. So here the first is the purchase. So then your payment service will listen to this payment information, make the communication, and send the purchase complete event. And this purchase complete event will be listened by Keshantanu. So basically, we use Redis. Uh, do you directly in this organization? use Redis as a primary database or as a caching database? Uh, you can use both, not, not for this organization. No, I, I'm trying to understand what the standard is. Because in this example, uh, we are considering this is the primary database and we're inputting everything here. So is that the norm or uh, caching everything in Redis, whatever is, which queries are frequent, uh, that is the norm. That is what I'm trying to ask. And the second question is like, uh, I, I, I want to know, like, uh, is it a fixed schema or it is a variable schema, a schema like that in the, when we use Redis? It is okay. variable.
आई थिंक ट्रेनिंग इज ओवर शल वी लीव देन यस नोबडी इज हियर प्रिया मोरे इज आल्सो नॉट या लेट्स लीव देन ओके देन ड्रॉप ओके थैंक यू थैंक यू थैंक यू थैंक यू